technical topic. So this is a long chapter. We have a lot of pages in it. Okay, so moving on. Previously, we were discussing there's a lot of formula, which is the Kirchhoff law, V equals to IR square. So once we are done with this, now we need to know what is electricity. So in electricity, there's direct current and alternating current. So why is direct current and alternating current? So if you can see from the picture here, uh, electricity in a uh, direct current is moving in a single direction. But if it's an alternating current, then it will be moving in a uh, it will be moving in a positive and negative direction. Uh, so you're moving up and down. So uh, here, the picture here, it shows a diagram, a figure here. So the battery here, this is a configuration for a direct current. And in alternating current, so you have a commercialized power generator and a cable and connected, and this will be connected to a house. So the current here, it will be going in a positive and a negative direction. So it will have a frequency. Okay, uh, let me go in with this direct current and uh, the definition and the, the definition for direct current and alternative current first. Then I will discuss a bit on why there is these two. So a direct current is a uniform current flowing in one fixed direction. So look, uh, looking back at the, uh, remembering back at the previous slide, a direct current is a battery. So with using a battery, you have a uniform current flowing in a fixed one direction. Okay, so uh, here it says the direct current is usually supplied by acid-based battery or dry cell. So with this acid-based battery and dry cell, with their chemical reaction, by having a positive and negative side, they are able to supply energy in a single direction. So that's why it's called a direct current. Okay, if you can see here, a direct current have a fixed voltage, but for an alternating current, which is from a generator, they will have a positive and negative. Why is this a uh, positive? Uh, only a fixed positive value, and why is it an alternating uh, alternating value? So you can see here, a uh, direct battery, they have a, just a fixed line, means their their voltage is constant. But for a uh, alternating current, they are going up and down. So there's a difference here because of the how they are. Uh, how they are being stored or how they are being supplied from uh, from what equipment. So in the battery, you are using chemical, which can be, which is usually acidic. So they have a positive and negative pole. And then how they are giving off the electricity, the energy is through the differences in this positive and negative. So that's why you obtain a fixed voltage, but why is this? Uh, why is the why is the current? Why is the voltage from a generator alternating? Which means they're going up from up and bottom. This is because of the way the generator is. Uh, this is a this is because of how the generator works, because they are moving in a they are turning. They are turning, they are using a mechanical force, they are turning to generate the forces. So due to these forces being turned, the battery, the energy stored is actually going up and down because of the movement of this mechanical instrument. Okay, alternating current is a current which changes its direction periodically periodically in a circuit. So it's going positive and negative at a very high frequency. So you can see here at 50 frequency, 
the voltage in each wire is positive and negative 50 times each second. So when you see this frequency, it means that if it's at 50 hertz, it's going up and down 50 times positive, 50 times negative. So there's 100 times changes in the in the voltage for the wire in each second for alternating current. And then when in a 240 voltage service, the maximum voltage is about 340 volt. So uh, why is it? Why is it? Why is there something like this? So this is average amount of voltage service, but because alternating current, uh, alternating current is going up and down. There's a frequency to it. There's a changes to the voltage. That's why, uh, what is to, uh, being talked about of the current is always the average. It's not the maximum or not the minimum, but the average of the alternating current, which means the current is going up and down. There will be a peak there'll be a minimum, but you do not want the peak or the minimum. You want the average voltage that the current has applied for you. That's why you will call it a 240 volt service instead of a 340 volt. So this 340 volt is the peak of the, vo the voltage, the alternating current that can be provided. So this 240 volt it's called an uh, effective voltage because it's going at a 50 hertz frequency which means it's going up and down a lot of time so this configuration is fluctuating very fast so that through our usage of our equipment using this current we find that there's no interaction with this to, uh, to the equipment so there's no problem with us using this alternating current. Lah. Okay, so uh, if you read the first, the second part, this is the why there's this alternating current. Lah. Alternating current is generated from alternating current generator, such as hydroelectric or combined cycle power generator. So it's because of how we generate the energy. That's why we have this alternating, alternating current. Because there's very difficulty, there's a difficulty in generating very a lot of amount of the direct current. But with this alternating current generator, we are able to generate generate a lot of electricity through the use of other forces, such as from the dam. So that's why this is a main method of generating electricity in Malaysia. So if you want a lot of you, if you want a direct current. If you want to generate a direct current energy, then you need to have a very, very big battery. And then this battery will require a big type of acid, which is positive and negative. So it's not feasible. That's why in our household and for our general use, we are all using alternating current. So one thing you will see is that alternating current it's like a sine wave so it's going up and down so that's why it's a uh, it's called alternating current <laughs> so it's always changing so this is the part about alternating current so you can have a read edit later to know more about it if you forget about it okay okay so uh this is root mean square so it's a bit of calculation to how to get the maximum value and the RMS value. So there's a relationship of RMS value to the maximum value of the AC. <clears throat> okay, so this is the formula. Either you're the top or the bottom. So this top and bottom is the same, although you have these differences in the constant. It's because due to they are moving the this value left and right. Lah. So if you are to move this 1.414 to the uh, to here, it will be 1 over 1.414, which is equal to 0 
zero seven. So it's just a movement of this formula or relationship. Uh. Okay, so this is a figure for the alternating current. So because in actual measurement, we we find that the sign the alternating current is going up and down in this formation, but because it is always diff always going up and down and always is always different, we want to find the average of this of the power that they are providing because it's moving at a very high frequency. There will be a average voltage that this supply can provide. That's why this is important. This RMS voltage. This is how we want to find out the average voltage of the alternating current. So if you can see here, there's a actual voltage variation. This is how actual is like. But instead of finding out the instead of using this actual voltage variation to simplify our calculation, we have to actually equalize it. So by using this RMS formula, we can equalize the voltage for the DC as a DC calculation instead of having a variation of this. So we want to easily calculate to simplify our calculation. We have to apply this RMS voltage formula into it and then we have an equivalent voltage to simplify our calculation. Okay, so this is an example 10. So A is calculate the maximum value of AC voltage when the RMS value is 240. And then B is calculate the RMS value of an AC current which has a maximum value of 30 amp. So here you are given RMS value is 240 and then here is you are given a AC current which is 30 amp. So you just put in the formula, put in the value into the formula, then you will be able to get the, the answer for it. So the answer for A maximum value is 339.36 and then B is 21.21 amp. So it's basically you just apply the formula the value into the formula and then you'll be able to get either the maximum value or the RMS value. So you'll have to play around with the formula a bit. Lah. You need to learn how to move the formula. So if you are, if it's asking you to find the RMS value and then this is a formula you you have. So you are do, uh, you are just moving the, form, the value here left and right. So when you move from left to right, if it's one over, for example, one over this, which is one over maximum value, when you move it to the right hand side, then this will flip up. Or likewise, if you are moving this one to here, 0 0.707, 0 .7, you move it to here, then it will be one over 0 0.707. .07. So you should get back this value. Okay, so that's about it for the AC and DC. So this is a single or three phase supply. So we will discuss more on the alternating current. Why? Because this is our main way of generating electricity. So in a alternating current, there's one phase and three phase. For one phase, that's the standard where you or what you see just now, which is there's only one current but in three phase there will be three current as, repre as represented by this sine wave. So why is there a single phase and a three phase? So let's go into it. So this is an alternating current. Just uh, repeat again this alternating current. Okay so a single phase two wire system. So a uh, single phase Electric power supply refer to the distribution of alternating current power using two wire. One is light and one is neutral return wire. So in Malaysia, we usually adopt this 240 volt single phase system for our house. So uh, 
here it says that the distribution is usually for light, which is we are for our, in our house, we only use uh, lighting and heating and maybe a few small motor or large motor. So uh, this is our DB box. So uh, standard, most basic single phase electric system is what we have in our house. So there's only a, it's a two wire system, which is a life and a neutral. So a life is where the energy come in and a neutral is where the energy return. Okay, that's all. This is a three phase four wire system. So in a three phase four wire system, there are three lines carrying a life voltage of 240 volt each. And then there's a one neutral return wire. So if you can see at the first part, there's a, for a three phase four system, there's a three sign. Means three power supply is being supplied into the system instead of a single phase. So in a three phase, you have three light power carrying wire going into your system. Okay, and then in this three phase, they are designed in such a way that they are they are to reach their maximum value at different time. So one wire is to be picked at a at this particular area, and then once it pick finish, it go down. They are actually re uh, re replaced by the second wire, and then the third, and then by the time the third wire ends, the first wire are supposed to pick back again. Hence, you will have a average. You have a higher and average voltage. So we we previously we go we I thought that in a single phase eight alternating current, the voltage can actually reach higher than the specified, which is 240 volt. They are, they are actually picking up at about 315. But in a three phase, because each of them are picking up at different, different timing, the three phase system are actually able to supply an even higher amount of power, which is 415 volt. So, this system is applied to a house or a commercial lot which have which required higher power than the average means you want to draw more power you have more electric equipment in your house then you use this system but this one is more uh, mostly for residential if you go for commercial then they will have their own special requirement because a uh, commercial building they have very large equipment. So to power this equipment, they have to lay their own special cable. The TMB will have to come, they have to pay for pay to TMB to lay this special big cable to be able to power up their equipment. So this is the one phase and the three phase system is just for our housing. So this is just for information. Okay, so this additional figure. So here this is a three phase power. So as previous mentioned, we just a word. This give uh, this is a picture we give you a clearer image of how the first is the first phase is picking up and then as it goes down, the second wire which is providing the power should go up. So it will pick and then as it goes down, the third wire will pick up. Then when it comes down, because this is a three-phase system, the, the first wire should, should have completed the cycle and return to pick up the voltage. So this is the idea on the three-phase. Okay, so this is a figure on how it will actually look like. So you have a house, you have this electric pole, and then if you have a, if your house is being supplied by a three phase supply line, then you have three wire going into your house. If not, then it will be only two wire. Lah. So this red 
yellow, blue, and neutral, uh, it won't be available. Lah. You won't be able to see it because in, in practical, all of them will be in black color. Lah. <clears throat> okay, so this is additional. So it shows that for our houses, we only require up to about 240 volt. And then in office, you can be 450 or either 240 volt. So this depends on what sort of office you're doing. If you have an office that runs, that requires equipment to, that requires a very high power equipment, then you have to apply for 415 volt power supply. Okay, so here will be a one phase, two phase, three phase, and a neutral. So four wire will be going into this office if it's a 415. Okay, what are the advantage of the single phase and the three phase system? So because you are supplying power at a higher voltage, the three phase system is actually providing a lower current compared to the single phase system. So there's an advantage to using three-phase system. Three-phase motor draw less current than single-phase motor of equal capacity, although the power requirement is generally the same. So the three-phase motor with the same power capacity draw less current per wire, therefore can use a less expensive lighter gauge wire. So here it says that Three phase motor uses less current. Why it uses less current? Because the power supply is being supplied through multiple wire. That's why you are able to split the uh, current among the wire. Because you are able to split the current among the wire, you do not have to use a very expensive or uh, you don't have to use more wire more conductor so that's the reason behind uh, the motor being more uh, cost saving eh? <clears throat> okay three phase motor are simpler lower in cost and more travel fee and then they are efficient over a wide range of loading compared to their single phase counterpart okay the only problem is a uh, three phase cannot operate on a single phase system so you require more high tension wire line to operate a three phase service as opposed to only the single phase so this is just a brief explanation advantages okay next is this wiring system okay uh, power circuit ring final circuit and radical circuit so this is actually your DB box wiring lah. So uh, ring final circuit is used for single phase power supply to the three pin. So it consists of a line neutral and earth. So this is all the information on how the wiring works in your house. Okay, uh, domestic building can have a unlimited number of socket. So because our house uses very low power compared to a commercial. We are only powering maybe a charger for our phone, our laptop. So all this equipment doesn't really take up a lot of energy. So you can have an unlimited amount of socket in which you can plug into. So there's a limit to it. So application appliances and installation with a load factor above three kilowatts must not be connected to any part of a ring final circuit so anything uh, which have a very high power requirement we should not uh, use it in our housing area or uh, or the area that is not uh, built for it so if you are to just plug a very high power into a socket there's a you might encounter a problem that the circuit might burst lah for due to drawing too much power Okay, so uh, here, so this is all the info for the 
green final circuit and a radial circuit. Okay, if you can see here, this is the fixed electric line, our DV box. This is our fuel box, fuel, uh, fuse box. So our electric will come in through here. This is our electric line. Then it will go through all this area. Either that or the bottom one. And then the, there will be switch here which allows either this area to on or this area to off. So this switch, if you can, uh, this switch allows you to control the electricity power supply to an area. So you have a lot of switch here. If you can see in the, okay, it's the next picture. So this is our DB box, huh? so to say, and then we have our power supply socket at different, different places. Okay, so this is our, this is a picture. <coughs> so each of these is a circuit breaker. <coughs> and then we have a main switch. <coughs> so this, uh, this is what you usually find in our house to control the electricity. So this is the minor circuit breaker for the area. This is the main circuit breaker. And then this is our main switch so if we switch this on and off we will be able to control the electricity supply to our home and then if there's lightning then this will flip this will flip down and then you have to flip this up so this is a earth leakage circuit breaker so when a lightning strike to protect your equipment to protect all your electronic devices this will be the first main protection that will flip off and then the second is this the MCCB. So this is a miniature circuit current breaker. So this is a circuit breaker for each of the uh, different different area of your houses. So if you have a lot of area in your houses, like maybe second floor or ground floor or first floor, then depending on which area the electricity short circuit, you find that this flip will flip, uh, will flip down, uh, it will short circuit. So it will, it, it will short circuit, it will flip down, and then it will cut off the electricity from being continuously supplied to that area. So once it flip off, then you'll find that your area where the electricity is being supplied for by this switch, all of them will be cut off. Then you have to find out what's the problem or what happened. Okay. So lightning circuit and switches. Every sub circuit is generally limited to a total of 1000 watt and require five fuses and switch. So wiring to lightning point should be carried out on what is known as the looping method. Okay, so this is generally the wiring distribution in your house. So you can have different, different method to control the lighting in your house. Either A, B, and C. A is, is one way switch control, B is two way, and then three is intermediate switch control. So you'll find this one way, which is generally in your room. You have only one way to control on and off in a room. For B, two way switch control, you'll find this in toilet or in landing. So in shared, in let's say a shared toilet, you can have a person switch on the light and then you can have another switch to control the on and off. So it's connected in pairs. There's a, this two-way switch control can also be con, uh, installed in a hallway. Maybe you're going up and down the flight of stairs. You have uh, lighting. You have light along the stretch of the staircase so you can have a switch at the bottom and you can have a switch at the top of the staircase so when you want to go up the staircase if it's at night you can on the switch at the bottom and once you have uh, go up to the first floor and then you can just off the switch from the top so this is the place to use a two-way switch and then for intermediate switch control 
So this one is if you have a very large or huge area. So this is for convenience sake. You have instead of a two way, you can have one at the outside, one at the in uh in entry and exit, and then another one in the middle of the room. So this is to for convenience sake lah. If you have an intermediate switch control system. Okay, if you can see here. So this first is a wiring configuration for a single for one way switch control. So if you on if you complete the circuit by uh pressing the switch, which means this one will complete the circuit, and then this three light bulb will light up. So likewise for this, if you light up this to light up this switch, you just on the switch close the circuit and then once it's a complete circuit it will light up the lamp so this is connected in a series this lamp okay for a two-way switch control you have a bit more complicated the switch will be so it's still the same you have to complete the circuit so that the current can flow through and then power up this lamp then you have this uh, configuration so theoretic, theoretically, the two-way switch lamp is like this, the idea. Lah. So once you press the button here, and then it's a two-way switch. So it should actually complete the circuit or cut off the circuit, complete the circuit as if, if they are both in the same direction, which means they are here. And then this switch is at this location. And then this switch is also at this location. So this lamp will be light up. So when you move, when you want to switch off the lamp, you just have it at a opposite direction. So that means the, the circuit is not complete. So here, then it will stop since this go up. Okay, so for intermediate switch, it's also the same like the two-way switch instead you have another one you have a three switch okay because you are putting in more uh, more switch to make sure that it's working properly you require more wire so you can see that there's a lot of wire here so the it works the same way the wire is configured in such a way that they are, you can on and off the lamp in a single metal. Lah. So if you are to have it here, and then if all of them are connected, you can light up the lamp. So doesn't matter how they are configured, if you are actually to press it on, they are supposed to light up. They are, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, lah. they are supposed to complete the circuit. So this uh, intermediate switch control will be a bit special in such a way that it will connect the, it will easily connect this to this. Uh. Okay, so this is a area of a house. So here it shows that the two-way landing switch. So most of the time you will not have a two-way switch at a hallway or in a very big area if not in a row you just have a one-way switch okay so more configuration of a room and where the switch will be at so for dv box you usually find the dv box at the entrance of your house so let's see where is this located in Okay. Okay, the next, let's go to the next one. So this is a type of electric cable. So there's two main types of cable used in electric supply and distribution. So one is the armored cable, and then the another one is the PVC or rubber insulated cable. Okay, for the armored cable, this is usually used for 
main and sub main. So in Malaysia, all our cable is laid underground. So this is to provide, this is to ensure that you will not see a lot of wire hanging, wire hanging through the pole. So it will be a bit of, it will be a bit ugly lah to see a lot of wire hanging through the pole. So if you go to Thailand, you actually see that they are, they have their electric cable up on the cable, uh, up on the ground. So in Malaysia, we are actually bearing all our cable. So it will make our, it will look nice uh, instead of having a lot of cable up on the ground. So for the armored cable, as the name implies, is armored to provide protection from mechanical damage. Because we are doing it underground, so there will be marking uh, to, to indicate that the electric cable is here in a in a form of like that uh sign or something uh, or cover so when you're doing earthwork usually the cable will be protected by a zinc sheet uh, but since we are using machinery which can easily dig out the ground so this zinc sheet is just to provide a quick indication uh, but if they do not take note they are gonna dig up the zinc sheet up easily. Uh. So this, uh, by having the cable armored, it provides an additional protection. And then, high powered cable is also protected by a precast concrete. So for about this precast concrete, usually they do not use a precast concrete. Like they just have a they just have a high power cable and then they are armored and then maybe they put a zinc sheet. So in Malaysia, they do not put a precast concrete like, unless they got a budget for it. Like. So what I find that through my working experience, there's no precast concrete protecting the high voltage cable. Okay, one thing good about this cable is they are tolerant to overheating, robust, strong and resistant to moisture. So this is how they are built like. They have a PVC insulation layer and then they are protected by this steel wire armor. And then they are provide, they are again protected by PVC insulation again. And then inside here, this will be their, the main body to carry the electricity, which is copper. <clears throat> so as the name implied, armored cable. So the armored cable is the steel wire armor. So this provide an additional protection against any damages uh, from mechanical damage, mostly from mechanical damage. Oops. Okay. Let's see. Okay, the second is a PVC and rubber insulated cable. So obviously they are cheap because you do not have all this uh, metal, uh, what's this, uh, metal steel wire armor. So obviously they are cheap uh, because they are only protected by rubber and do, they do not have this metal wire armor. So uh, here they are so simple, uh, simple to install. So you just have to click at it using it at a regular interval. Here, the PVC rubber insulated cable is most, mostly usually for our home use. So they are general usage. They have a temperature limitation between 0 to 70 degrees. Why there's this uh, temperature limitation? Because of the PVC and rubber. So if you have a very high temperature, this PVC and rubber is going to melt or they are going to be very soft. So below zero temperature, the PVC and rubber become brittle and easily damaged. In high temperature, they become soft, which could damage the, uh, which could melt, which could cause the rubber or PVC to melt and then you expose the conductor. <coughs> so if it expose the conductor, then this will be very dangerous, dangerous for us. Because if we were to accidentally touch it, then the current will go through our body and we will get electrocuted. 
okay outside of this temperature the cable must be protected by a rubber insulated spec so here this rubber insulated spec uh could be the cable protector let me open up yeah so it will be something like it will be something like this uh, rubber protector or in a house if your house is very old it will be a uh, it will be this square thing it will be this plastic cable protector so you have this plastic cable protector in your house inside there will be your electric cable but now uh it's not now lah, like 20 to 30 years ago instead of having this plastic cable protector it will look more nicer to just bury your cable into the concrete so in new houses or if your house is already old and you are renovating it then you will have no choice but to have this cable protector to protect your cable so if your house is new then you will not see your cable uh, you, the cable will not be visible because all your cable will be buried into your concrete okay next one okay cable is usually have one or two or three conductor so this is the copper inside and then if you were to cut the wire then you will be able to see that there's at least three red black and green they are colored this is a general color so red for the life black for the neutral and green for the earth so the earth is always protected with a clean green sleeping so this is your cabling inside your house so please do not go and mess with it because they are all powered unless you know what you're doing okay so let's talk a bit about electrical safety so electrical Safety is electricity is supplied to consumer and must pass through several control devices before it reaches the load. So this is to ensure the safety of consumer from accidentally electric shock themselves and to prevent fire due to electrical fault. So because electricity actually kills people, we have to we have to make sure that it's very it's safe for the general consumer because not everyone studied how electricity works they are we are actually supposed to make it foolproof so that the general consumer do not go and play around with it do not go and touch it so that's why there's this electrical safety being implemented so there's three so this is a three common method of limiting the seriousness in electric safety first off is you are to increase the resistance to limit the flow through body and then the second is uh, limiting the pressure to a safe voltage that cannot overcome resistance the third is uh, limiting the length of time which current flows by installing the earth leakage circuit breaker so here this uh by installing the earth leakage circuit breaker once a circuit breaks why a circuit breaks because the current is being drawn over the limit that's why this circuit breaker works so when the circuit breaker works it will disconnect the the loop a complete loop and then this will limit the time for the current to flow through so the second part the the first part limiting increasing the resistance the second is to ensure there's a maximum limit of voltage and then the third is the circuit breaker so this part is where most of our electric safety come from for this and this and it's not really common or i'm not really sure where it's installed so everything have a resistance a copper have a very low resistance that's why it's being used to transmit electricity so 
our body have a very high resistance actually, but to kill us off, we do not actually need a very high current. So what kills us off is actually not the voltage, but the current. But the, the thing about current is, because it's a V equals to IR, doesn't matter if your uh, voltage is very high or your current is very, uh, very low, depending on what is your uh, V over I. So if your our resistance in our body is constant. So if you are to over a certain amount of the V over I, we are going to get electric electrocuted to death. So I'm not sure about this one and two, but for three, this is what we have in all our houses. <clears throat> okay, supply control. The service incoming cable is usually buried at a depth of 450. So this is to prevent us manipulating with it unless you are doing unless you want to steal electricity then nothing can do about it so the service are usually buried underground so that you do not uh, we are not exposed to it so all these are the responsibility of TNB they are the one who come in and they are to install the meter and also the some of the cabling mostly the cabling above ground okay so a main switch or circuit breaker is fitted after the meter and then a distribution box and then following by the main switch so everything is installed to the furthest outlet point and then after that that is the responsibility of the building owner <clears throat> so the main component of the supply control are the service fuse, meter, and then this is the circuit breaker, and then the DB box. <coughs> so if you can see here on the picture on the most left one, so this is where the electric power supply came from, the cable, they are underground. So there will be a seal here to make sure that uh, just the cable come in and nothing else. And then we go on to here, this is the main component of how the power is being distributed. So we have a service fuse. <clears throat> this is a additional safety to if the TMB want to cut off your power supply, this is where they cut off your power supply. And then you have a meter here. So how much power is being drawn into your house, you will continuously turn this meter. And then this is consumer. This is our consumer side. We can use this is usually located inside your house. And then this is usually located outside your house. Then you have this. This is a DB box, your circuit breaker, and then also your distribution box. So here it shows there's a separate toolbox. But if you look back at the previous picture where I talked about, it's actually usually uh, in a single box. So you have your, uh, you can control the area of your electricity through the means of the circuit breaker. <coughs> okay, protection against excess current. So all the circuit must be protected against overcurrent or excess current. So they have a rated value. So this is to protect against our equipment damage or any risk of fire or or it might hurt people. <clears throat> so there's three devices to do the job, which is a miniature circuit breaker of the reliable fuses and then the cartridge fuses. Okay, in our house, we we'll usually have this electric circuit breaker, which is this MCB which is a miniature circuit breaker. So this is expensive, but it's reliable in terms of you can use it for a lot of years. For cartridge fuse, so if you can see a fuse here, so once the current is above the rated amount allowed for this fuse wire, then it will burn out and the electricity is cut off. So it's a single use system. And then a reliable fuse, 
this one is technically the same with this so you have a wire from good to complete the circuit from here to here and then if the current is above the allowable current rating for this wire then the wire will burn out like this so this one and two you is a concept so you usually not find it in your house so if you do not know what you're doing or you do not want to uh, always take care of this small small stuff it's better is a standard to always have this electro uh, the mcb installed in your house so uh, is to come to have more convenient and more reliable lah. so better than if you forget to put in or you need to buy the replacement for this or you need to re rewire the office again and again and if you don't know what you're doing because this is like electricity you get you get electrocuted so most of our house it will have this mcb so you will not be able to see this uh you is this will be working behind the scene but you'll be able to enjoy all the function lah. so all our house will be will have this miniature circuit breaker instead of this one and two <clears throat> okay so nothing so nothing is very important so the installation is very simple you just drive a copper 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 rod you just drive a copper rod into the ground then that is considered a thing so the principle of a thing is that you have to limit the difference in potential between the light and the earth so if a person touch a light conductor correct that is correctly earth so because the resistance for the earth conductor is lower than us by theory is supposed to go into the ground instead of going to us so this is why i think it's important this is to additional protection to protect us from being electrocuted but oftentimes after many many years of no maintenance or just leaving it there so this there will be some fault with this of thing lah, due to it being corroded or being damages or being damaged <coughs> so this is not a uh, foolproof so it's better to not go and play and go and touch the conductor uh, light power conductor to just test it out so don't do that a lot of protection is in place but because electric equipment they are mostly just uh, do dump and give to consumer and consumer do not do any maintenance or do any check-in on it so all these precautions are being put in place to minimize the risk for the consumer okay so uh, this is a picture a method of opting to prevent electric shock so if everything is if your stuff is uh of is of thing properly it shouldn't shock you such in the case for this metal case so it's connected to the ground so if there's any earth uh if if there's any electric leakage it should go to the ground or either this one the earth of thing Okay, the earth leakage circuit breaker so this is usually employed where overhead lines are employed and no form of direct lifting is available so this is for commercial purposes you have a commercial wire line and then they are all overhead so because they are overhead is it will be very difficult to limit the current in case something happened So there's a fault detector coil which is designed to trip when the overcurrent when there's an over of current when there's a overload of current. Okay, the last one is the power distribution system. So let's 
one with it. So there are three methods, which is radial distribution and ring main distribution. And then the last one is a rising main distribution. So this is for distribution for large building. More, one and two is for residential, which is for landed. And then the rising main distribution is for high rise building. Okay, so for radial distribution, there'll be a separate undercount cable uh, laid for each substation to each building. So if you can see at a picture here, this means that there's a substation here. This is where the uh, where the voltage will be stepped down. And then cable will be laid and supplied to our house at a 240 or two or at the 240 volt lah, either that or 415 volt. So radio distribution will means that each of them have their own uh, distribution board. So there will be a lot of cable. If you can see here, this is one of the method. Another one of the method is a ring main distribution. So instead of having different cable, different dedicated cable each to the building, you have a single complete loop cable to each of the building. So this is for a large scale development. And then there's a few advantages to it. As you can see, the first one is the less cable because you are not providing cable individually to each of the home, you are having that in a loop. And then the second is the current is able to flow in either direction. So if you have any voltage drop due to the houses not uh, taking more or less voltage, then this is a good thing. Lah. Your current can flow in either direction, then there will not be any chances in the voltage drop. Okay, so the last is the ring cable may be sized smaller to take account of the diversity factor for all the building since a heavy load is unlikely required for all the building simultaneously. So what this means is that because this is a large development scheme, which means to adopt this method is mostly for residential. So for residential, you know that inside the house, there's this uh, standard appliances, electric appliances in the house. It means you have about one washing machine, one refrigerator, and then TV and aircon. So all this heavy usage of electricity, we can factor, we can calculate and factor into this sizing of the cable. So you may size it smaller as opposed to bigger because we know that we can actually calculate how much the house will require either that or the TMB will come and size it accordingly lah, once uh, every 20 to 30 years due to the corrosion of this wire then they will size it based on the TMB bill that they have because if you are drawing a lot of energy, then your bill will be very high. Okay, the last one is the rising main distribution. So for a building higher than five floor, you usually use this rising main distribution. The method of supplying is the same. You'll use a, you'll be passing through a conductor and then out of the conductor, you'll go to a distribution board to each room. So it's a standard means. So let's have a look at the picture on how it looks like. So you have incoming cable, this is your power supply. And then you have your meter or maybe a fuse box on uh, the fuse box is on top. And then you have wire continuing all the way. So this will branch off to each floor. They will be tapping off onto the main main line and then this will be in your house for you to manipulate around the area or to troubleshoot anything or to control the or there will be a circuit breaker here to make sure you do not burn off 
the electric equipment in your house. So it will be a single place here and then you will go up to the highest floor. So uh, that's about it for the electric topic.